Lee Duffy's fighting prowess was awesome. It really was. Lee was raised on the toughest estate of them all, Southbank, so he'd done his apprenticeship for the big bad world. The difference between Lee and the other hard men of Teesside was that Lee was an athlete. One of Lee's best friends told me Lee was like the blackest white man that ever lived, and what I mean by that is he had such incredible bone structure. When Lee was young, climbing up the ladder as a 17-18 year old, he would go running up Eston Hills with logs tied to him as well as heavy rucksacks on his back. He was the ultimate athlete. I'm told by the people who saw Lee ripping into the heavy bags at the gym that he had even more power than what was necessary. Even if he wasn't training, he was always in good shape all year round, regardless of what drugs he was taking, how late he was staying out or whatever he was eating, he was forever in shape. From the age of 17 years old, Lee Duffy's name was a major force to be reckoned with in Southbank. When he was just that age, landlords like Barry Suggett, who had a couple of pubs, told me that if he ever had any problems, he would go give the Duff a shout, and Lee would sort it out for Barry. Lee was extremely close to Barry's younger brother, Robert, at the time. Most of the time, Lee was up against fully mature men when Lee himself was still a skinny beanpole of a lad. Lee also used to do the same for Stu Stamp in his pub in Southbank. After a year or so of honing his fighting skills around Southbank's High Street, which was an incredibly busy place in the 1980s with pubs galore, Lee decided to venture into the town of Middlesbrough and wreak havoc in his own special kind of way, a way that only Lee Duffy could. Back in 1982-83, the city centre had absolutely no idea what was laid ahead at that time, but even in those early years, whenever Lee Duffy was out of prison, the town as a whole braced itself. <laughs>